get up to the... I play number, uh, I'm number three. I play middle sweeper, and my name is Gabriel. My number is four, my name is Eddie Gomez, and I play fullback. My number is five, I'm Bruce Moreno, and I play middle half. My number is six, my name is Jaren Satan, and I play mid, middle half. My number is seven, my name is Kevin Chen, and I play super. My number is nine, and I play middle forward, and my name is Jaren I'm number 10, I'm Jeremiah Price, and I'm fullback. I'm number 11, my name is Ricardo, I play left wing. I'm number 10, I mean, I'm number 12, I'm, my name is Mitchell Phillips, and I'm playing middle halfback. I'm number 15, my name is Brian Makins, and I play forward. My, na my number is number 20, my name is Kevin Makins, and I'm playing halfback. I'm number 21, I'm Andrew McKenna, and I play fullback. I'm goalie and, and I'm Brian Spears. I'm Michael Collier, I play goalie. Yes. Welcome to another exciting soccer game. Here today at Stanley Park, we have Top Gun against the Hornets. Hi, everybody. I'm George Marble, along with my partner and colleague, Mike Benson. Should be a good soccer game. Top Gun 6-4-2 and two on the year, and the Hornets 2-6-4. Uh, Top Gun, their first year of the double-A team, they've done fairly well. And they've had a good year. Uh, Mike, should be a good game. Both teams looking to play. Well, both teams getting off to a quick start thus far, showing a lot of uh, good ability as far as fundamentals. And it's always nice to see George at such a young age. You see these, guys, these kids that, that are 8, 9, 10 years old learning the game and learning the fundamentals at a young age. And that's vital when it comes to the later years. So as you can see, they're handling the ball real well and just getting off to a nice start here. Okay, let's go over the lineups and rosters of both sides. First, let's start out with uh, Top Gun. We have number two, Ari Ampudia, the wing. Number three is Gabriel Bolton the middle sweeper. Number four is Eddie Gomez, the fullback. Number five is Bruce Moreno, the middle halfback. Number six is Jared C., the middle halfback as well. We have number seven, Kevin Chen, the sweeper. Number eight is Phil Hill, the middle halfback. Number nine, Ramon Robles, the center forward. Number 10 is Jeremiah Price, the fullback. Number 11 is Ricardo Almedia, the wing, and number 12, Mitchell Phillips, middle halfback as well. We have Brian Makinson and Kevin Makinson both playing, and A.J. McCammett, the fullback, and also playing wing today. And finally, we have the goalies in the game. We have Brian Spears and Michael Collier, and Brian Spears, I believe, will be starting goalie today, and he will start out playing that position. So we have most of the roster. Philip Hill, I was told, will not be playing today, but we did want to mention him as being part of this Hornet team. And now, Mike, let's go over the uh, Hornet team. Why don't you give us the roster for the Hornets? Okay, but before we do that, let me just backtrack one second. I like the way that Coach Fernando McCayman set up the, the lineup here. Instead of going with your standard center, uh, kicking things off and having your two wingmen on the side, he mixes things up. He actually has his two forwards up at the front, then on the second line, he actually has two wings on the outside, halfbacks, followed by his sweepers in the back and his fullbacks just above the goalie. So a little different type of setup there. Now, obviously, it might be his own little strategy, but I'm sure that uh, he hopes that it will work out to his advantage. But, yes, taking a look at the Hornets lineup, we'll give you a rundown on the players, their numbers, and their positions. Number one is Reese Peluso. He's a, a fullback. Uh, Actually, uh, I'm not sure if he's going to play today. I think he might uh, be sick. I think he might be out of the lineup today. But number two is Daniel Nuss. He's their fullback. Number four, Michael Yeager, right forward. Number five, Tim Littrell. 
is a center as well as a halfback. Number six, Justin Tenuto, a center forward. Look to see him come in as a goalie in the second half to alternate in there with Sean York, who's going to be the goalie in the first half. Eric Fontanella, number seven, at the left fullback. Number eight, John Houston, is the left halfback and plays left forward as well. Number nine, Chris Helmer, is the right fullback. And then, of course, I mentioned earlier, number 10, that's Sean York. He's going to be the goalie in the first half, and then uh, in the second half he'll be playing in one of the forward spots. Number 11, Brian Young, is the right halfback. Number 12, Albert Liu, is a sweeper. Number 13, Dallas Kelchin will be at the left forward. And number 14, Nathan Fuo at, at center and halfback as well. So a pretty balanced lineup there for the Hornets today, George. Okay, let's get into the action here. A lot of uh, mention of all the players, well, quite a few of them on both sides to take part in this game. And uh, here we have the Hornets attacking to our left in the first half. And the uh, Top Gun Blue team will be moving to our right side in this first half of play. Halves will be around 25 minutes or so for these boys under 10 AA. Some of these teams do end up going into County Cup and playing further. And I know the Hornets are going to be playing in the Coronado Christmas Tournament. There's quite a few of those games going on just after the Christmas holiday, uh, 26th to the 28th, and best of luck to them. And Top Gun plans to be in it as well. Also, I believe this is their first year in AA. They were a rec team as well last year, so that's pretty interesting to see. A big change when you go from A to AA for sure, as we have a toss-in now by number two for the Top Gun team. That's Ari the wing, and he'll be getting a chance to put that ball back into play. And right. while we're following all the action here, George, might add that some of the players, while you're talking about the Hornets, some of the players to watch will be number four, that's Michael Yeager, number 12, also Albert Liu, and number nine as well, Chris Helmer, the right fullback. Those are some of the key players for the Hornets. Also the most improved player on the, the Hornets team, number five, Tim Luttrell. And a shot on goal there, up and over the crossbar. A nice try there by number 15, Brian Makitson. So a first major threat that has happened now so far in this game. That's Top Gun making a bid to put a, the points on the board right away. Actually, a point on the board. And is as scoreless right now in the first half, 0-0. We're just underway here at Stanley Park Recreational Center. So they'll have a uh, goal kick coming up for the Hornets as they'll get a chance now to get some momentum going offensively. We have number 12 with the kick, that being Albert Liu, the sweeper. Centered out now to number five. We have Tim Luttrell, the center halfback, had it for a second. And now over to Top Gun and Gabriel. And that one will roll out of bounds. Yeah, Mitchell Phillip, uh, he's only eight years old. He's the, the middle halfback. He actually goes to Lafayette Elementary. He's a third grader there, enjoying other hobbies as well. Plays baseball, soccer, and likes collecting baseball cards, as most kids. Uh, at oh, this and a age. shot on goal right there. Nice try by the Hornets. They almost had one in. It hit towards the left side of the uh, post right there, nearly putting one in as they made a drive there and made a bid to try to take the early lead as the Top Gun team now moving it back the other way, that one rolling out, but they made a quick bid downfield there, a nice rush on offense, and good movement by the Hornet Club. They really did, and you have to credit, uh, George, again, the coaching of both of these teams, because as you're watching the game, take a look at the way both teams handle the ball. Good ball control skill by both, another bit inside here, centering pass, a through ball to the middle, but that one kicked out. Nice feed by Aries, he tried to find the striker in the middle to, to shoot one on goal, but the defense held on for the Hornets, and uh, that one going back out. So far, a lot of action in this game, but no scoring by their sign. Yeah, fullback uh, Eddie Gomez showing why he is their fullback. He has one of the strongest legs on their team, getting that ball back into the other team's territory. Inside again now, the fullback line holding tough for the Hornets as number five there, Bruce Moreno, dishing it off to his teammate inside, and again, the fullback's doing the job for the Hornets. And which has, I guess, been their strong suit this year, the back line. And they've been very active early on in this game as we'll have a corner kick from the side by Top Gun, who were 6-4-2 and two on the year in their first year of double-A play. So they really have come on and had a good uh, season. And you really can't expect much more than that, especially going from the recreational level as that one will uh, be kicked aside. And you take a look at some of the uh, players now in position to try to defend against the corner kick. A lot of sp uh, goals are scored from the uh, corner kick in soccer. This one is indirect, however. It was a good, strong kick there by Moreno, but it was broken up nicely by Nathan uh, Fuolo getting in on that uh, defensive play. 
So that one, a shot on goal that is taken away by the keeper and back over to the Hornets. And now the Top Gun Club trying to keep it in their offensive territory as they'll get a toss in, this time by Mitchell Phillips, the middle halfback. He'll throw the ball in. I like that header there earlier, George, by A.J. McCammon. He's the coach's son, and uh, he's an eight-year-old third grader himself. Good little player. Kick now towards the net. It hits the side of the post. This one goes out, but another close bid by Top Gun. They've been firing pellets at the net lately. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Uh, they're definitely getting their, their attempts on goal, and that's what it's all about, just trying to get yourself in scoring position as many times as you possibly can. But thus far, a good defensive battle as we do not have a score in the game. And here comes the kick by the Hornets, that being Albert Lou, the sweeper, doing it. And, of course, the coach is relying on sweepers to be the ones to boot that ball out of the like almost like icing in hockey just clearing that ball away and getting it away from the uh, offensive territory of their opposition and here we go with a corner kick now for the top gun team inside and oh goes right by number 11 there ricardo almost had it as mitchell tried to feed him but he couldn't quite connect on it and now we have a whistle and i think we're going to have a uh, a free kick coming up for the hornets i know it It'll be a throw one, it looks like. And speaking of free kicks, they seem to be going with uh, number 12. You'll see him out there, Mitchell Phillips, with that strong kick that he has. He's the one that they opt to go with on that, that corner kick because he can get the ball down there towards the goal line to give his teammates an opportunity to head one in or, or kick one in. Chance for them to uh, use the right people in the right positions. They've been able to do that all season. I think it's made them very competitive and successful in their record. And that would indicate that. Center it out now towards the net. Inside. Oh, the defense right there again as Harry looked to get a shot on goal, but he couldn't do it as the fullback line for the Hornets once again was right there when they had to be. I tell you, Ramon Robles bringing back memories of uh, the great Pele with some of those uh, nifty feet work that he's been showing us so far. Defended very well again, the Hornets right on it. And now both players going after the ball, and this one will be played in by the Hornets. And take a look there, a good shot of one of the players. As he tosses in, and he directs that ball towards Tim Luttrell, the center halfback. And now the Top Gun team making a run. Nice kick by Gabriel Bolden, but the keeper now right over there as he was unable to get it to one of his teammates. Mitchell again, he's been in the game an awful lot today, all over the field, ball right around him. He's been in the action quite a bit today. Back over now to Hornets, and now they'll have to back it up as the sweeper missing the ball, but the keeper right there behind him to, uh, to pick up where he left off. So we're up and down now, back and forth. Pace has slowed a little bit, and uh, a chance to uh, congratulate both teams on a, a, a good season, this being their next to last week of the year, and a chance for them to re remember this game as something they'll always want to see over and over again. That's what these videotapes are all about and events that you want to recapture when you can. And over there now, number seven, Eric Fontanella, defended by Ari. Actually, now it's Ramon Robles with it, and it goes short of the net. I tell you, he's quick, isn't he? Ramon Robles. I tell you, he's got to have an older brother, too, that plays this game because he's really nifty with his feet, very quick. And uh, anytime you can dribble the ball downfield with a lot of swiftness the way he does, you know he's going to be quite a player when he gets older. Number five there, and he knocked away. Moreno couldn't get it as the Hornets ma making a run for a second. Now back away as the, the front sweeper, I believe, kicking that one away for the top gun as he got it right in back and over to center circle area into the offensive territory. That was a good strong kick there, George. Something you have to have, and Fernando McCann, the coach, having two sweepers, like we had mentioned earlier, he has really uh, been effective doing it that way this season. Well, the fullback position, George, is such a vital position in soccer. Anytime you get that ball down on the defensive end, you need a player that's got that strong leg to get the ball back down in the other team's territory as soon as possible, and a big kick will do that. And that was a big one right there. Ramon, Ramon Robles looking for a score on that kick, and it hit the top of the, the, the net, but it went beyond it. And he showed a lot of power in his foot there. Ramon Robles, the center forward. We're still scoreless here in the first half. We're close to the halfway point. Kicking that one again will be Albert Liu. And again, George, just a credit to the defensive play in this game because there's only been three or four shots on goal this whole game so far. There's been some up and down action, but there's been no threats because the fullback line from each shot has been able to snuff it out. Let's go, guys. A lot of heading action there. 
good ball control for the top gun momentarily. And again, a lot, a lot of the kids uh, start developing this skill around this time. When they're really small, a lot of times they're just learning how to kick the ball around. But once they get to a certain level, they start learning how to keep the ball in the air and start learn how, learning how to hit it, keep it up in the air. Now over there now is Brian Makinson. Uh, let's see, I believe there, there's a whistle there, and I, I think that may have been an offside. We're going to have a goal kick for the Hornets. I'll tell you what they do in practice, George, is they have a variety of coordination drills, such as uh, heading the ball and keeping it up in the air, as you had mentioned earlier, keeping the ball up in the air off of one foot, and then from the thigh, from the thigh to the foot. And these type of drills develop the coordination, and that's what's so important and so vital at this young, tender age. Once the fundamentals are down pat, these kids end up developing their game to a, to a level that's appreciated by some grammar school and high school coaches. I tell you, the experience you get, the background you get when you're starting young like this will only help you when you become a high school athlete. And I'm sure a lot of these kids will end up being that. Some may not want to continue, but it's great to remember an event like this being taken place and how they were involved with it at the time they were. And that one going out now and run down there by number three, Gabriel Bolden, the middle sweeper. And we got some changes coming in there is number six, Jared Seed, and coming out number five for Top Gun, Bruce Moreno. And they'll have a, it's a switch there. And back to the action we go. A nice volley in the air by the Top Gun team, but taken away by the keeper. And, and again, competitive soccer, you see a lot of these, a lot more open action, no bunching up. The players are in their positions. They know where they have to go. They know how to play their position correctly. That is true, George. And once again, that's a credit to the coaching staff. And of course, to make it to this level and to be able to play in this game, obviously, uh, they're at a point now where they've, they've learned the game, they understand the positions as you said, they know where they're supposed to be, they don't get out of position, and that, of course, is the reason why they're not bunching up, uh, as you mentioned earlier. In the, in the action there, we had number seven, Eric Fontanella, and he'll give way to his keeper here in the first half. That's Sean York. So Sean's been very active for the Hornets. Slight edge now to Tom Gunn, but uh, the Hornets clear it out and make a run. Trying to make a run here, and the goalie now for Top Gun this time will take it. So the game thus far, just going back and forth, back and forth. Both teams battling it, uh, showing good ball control, getting it into the other team's uh, area, but unable to score. And that seems to be the scenario so far, George. is just good, uh, not taking anything away from the offensive skills of these players because both of them handle the ball very well, showing good coordination, using both feet in their head uh, as well. Just uh, unable to get uh, the ball through so far. Well, let's see if we can get some scores before halftime. Still scoreless. We only got about five minutes or so remaining before we hear the three whistles. And now cleared out there by the Top Gun team as they run it down. And over there is Ramon Robles again. But uh, he's unable to keep it in bounds. And uh, he'll get a chance to. Uh, Good strong kick, though, once again by the fullbacks of each team. So it's really been a, a fullbacks game so far today. It really has. As the Hornets will throw it back into play. Nice header there by the Hornets. Nice feed. He's able to get it over to Ricardo Almedia, the wing, the, uh, the halfback there for Top Gun. Top Gun in the action number two, Ari again in, in, the, in the picture for a second. Chipped out towards the middle. He's able to get a good foot on it, but he, a lot of coaches and a lot of these uh, teams that are successful stress the short passing game. It seems to be the way to do it. Now inside now, as the Hornets make a run, number four there, uh, Michael Yeager, and now he'll scoop it up and he'll it's a corner kick now, and the Hornets will take it from that side. Again, a lot of goals have been scored in that area. When you go inside, it's a very dangerous predicament for the defensive team. You've got to keep an eye on it. We've got number 11 taking the kick, Brian Young, the right halfback, and he'll do it. We'll see what he can come up with. I'll tell you, you've got to credit the goalie on that previous play on that shot on goal, or actually preventing the shot on goal, Brian Spears coming up out of his goalie position to come up and get the ball. Absolutely. Uh, there's a, a miss now there by number seven. Eric Fontanella, they directed it towards him, but he didn't quite get in the right position to be able to nail that one. And that's a break there for the Hornets, as the ball wasn't placed too far away from him, but he just wasn't able to get his foot over and to grab it. And now running over there was uh, Chris, actually number nine, uh, Ramon Robles for the blue Top Gun team. I tell you, George, the scenario so far is that the players are driving down in good speed on both sides of the ball for both teams. They're driving down, dribbling down the field, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, comes a fullback, and boom, he's banging the ball back to the other side of the field. 
And uh, again, it's just been exciting so far. No score, but an exciting game. A lot of action. So we're going to have a corner kick on that particular play, and it'll be the, the Top Gun team and their chance now to take the lead. It's nothing, nothing, close to the end of the first half here at Stanley Park Recreational Center. I'm George Marble, along with my partner, Mike Benson, today. I hope you're enjoying it so far, and I hope you want to remember this one as a classic because it has been that so far. Good defensive play there by Brian Young, preventing that corner kick to be as successful as I do know they wanted it to be. So Top Gun will take it from their offensive side. And now the Hornets, as they have been doing all morning long, clearing that ball away, and just a battle in the middle and, on, and behind in the fullback area. And in the action for a second was Brian Makinson, Brian the center forward, but Brian not able to get the shots he wants so far today, and vice versa for the striker for the Hornets. Brian Young there with a good, strong two-hand overthrow. That's important, too, uh, when you have the player that's taking the ball out of bounds, He's got to have good height to be able to see over the other players and a good, strong, two-handed overthrow so he can reach the players that he sees open. Another shot on goal there by Top Gun. Feed it out by Dallas Ketchlin, the left forward, but unable to get anything further as, again, the back up, back up. ball going right back over to the keeper for the Hornets as he will change over with his teammate for the second half and be a, a position player. Now we're there, Top Gun. They're just battling hard. Boys under 10 here, eight and nine year olds playing, and it's hard to realize that they're that young. Now, it looked like a ball went off the fellow's hand, but uh, I don't know if he called it. I guess, I guess it didn't quite, the referee didn't see that. Number 13 now over there is Dallas Ketchum on the left forward, he'll toss it in. And take a look briefly at the head coach for the Top Gun team over there on the sideline was Fernando, directing his troops. Nice kick again. Again, like we've mentioned the, the sweeping position has been an important one today for both sides. And just as you speak, we come up with another big, strong fullback kick to put uh, the Hornets in the field position that they want to be in. And there you see A.J. McCammon, uh, Fernando's son, the coach's son, battling hard against his uh, opponent, but unable to generate anything past him, but he did stop him, and he made a good defensive play on that particular moment. I'd like to, wanna, uh, like to also point out John Houston, the left halfback for the Hornets, on that last kick on goal. He's right-handed, uh, or right-footed, I should say, but came up with a nice, strong left-footed kick. And again, uh, a credit to the coaching staff having the players during practice kicking with their right foot, kicking with their left foot. That's important, mixing it up. A there. nice shot on goal there by the Hornets, but it was wide to the left-hand side. So back in play for the Top Gun team as... They've had the slight edge, but not a big one. It's been pretty close. Each team has generated a good five or six shot on, shots on goal here in the first half, generally speaking. And uh, But again, no dice for either side. So we're still 0-0 zero, zero after a good 15-plus minutes to play in this first half. But not action. without a lot of action by any means. Oh, no doubt about it. And now Top Gun looking to defend and tighten up their defense, lipped in, in the air there by Tim Luttrell, the center halfback, as he tries to find Michael Yeager over along the right-hand side, and Brian Young, the center halfback, and we're going to have a whistle on this, this play. So and great game so far, Georgia really is. Uh, a game doesn't have to be exciting, or, or have to, there doesn't have to be scoring in a game for it to be exciting, and that seems to be the scenario in this game, is it? We're getting a lot of action back and forth. Both teams really battling it out. And it's just a credit to both teams that there hasn't been any score so far. Well, when you play on a Saturday, you play a couple of times during the week with practicing and, and such, you do get a good chance to, to really refine and polish the fundamentals and understand what it takes to be a winner. Now, these boys just out there really having a good time today as a, a keeper now clearing it out for the Top Gun team. And uh, that, that being... Uh, I believe that was Brian Spears now clearing that. He's got a good strong leg. He's actually, if you take a look at him, physically speaking, he's a little bit bigger, George, than the other kids out there. And uh, he's got a, a very, very strong leg. And that's uh, the type of goal that you want to have, where when he gets that free kick and really fire that ball out there and get it out there near midfield. It's paid off so far for the top gun. As when the Hornets have threatened, they have momentarily, but it hasn't lasted too long because of that... The good kicking from the back line and the keeper for, for them. And now over there, we're going to have Airy 
giving away to Eddie Gomez, the fullback. Eddie will throw it into play. Eddie, I believe, just coming into the game recently as number 13 now, uh, Dallas Ketchlin, the left forward. And now Topkin and Mitchell Phillips. And back over there, we have Michael Yeager, the right forward. And Mitchell now with the ball back for the Topkin club. Now taken away by the Hornets as they make a run. They got some players along the center part of the field, but they couldn't do it as the goalie beat them to the ball, and they won the ball again. Winning the ball is so important in this game of soccer. I tell you, a lot of hustle, too, George, on that play, wasn't it? They were both driving down the right-hand side of that field. I almost thought that the forward was going to get free. All right, well, we hear the three whistles. That's the end of the first half. A scoreless soccer match between the Hornets and Top Gun. Good game, and we're looking forward to bringing you the second half. Five or six shots on goal by each side, but, but no go. As we will get ready for the second half, as we'll give you some shots of some of the players and some of the families here in the participating game at Stanley Park Recreational Center. 0-0 zero, zero is the score. The Hornets against Top Gun. And so, Mike, what do you think about the second half? What do we have to look and be concerned about in the second half here? Well, I don't really feel, George, that there needs to be any type of dramatic changes whatsoever. Both coaches, Coach Young and Coach McCammett, are probably going to tell their players to keep the ball on that offensive side of the field as long a time as they possibly can. And that's probably going to be the scenario. Second half coming up. You're standing still right there, too. You're not doing that either. Okay? What I'm saying is, you're going to have to pick the ball right away up. You're going to have to... You know, start taking decent shots. Remember how we passed back? Mitchell yes. and Jaron. Yeah, yeah. Jaron, you got to look at that, right? Take the shot, okay? Or when they have a goal kick, okay? When they have a goal kick, guys, please. When they have a goal kick, you got to win the ball. That's where you can get a score, okay? Don't let them. Don't let them win the ball when they have a goal kick. I want the following, guys. So that's so cool. But he says he's just... So you had a nice, you're having a nice season. Have a nice season. No, do you hope to have another one next year? Come on, say something. You're on camera. Tell me you have to leave. How you doing today? You having a good, having a good day today? You guys are scoreless, but uh, you think they're going to come back and win the second half? Yeah. And what do you think they need to do? Score some goals. There you go. Right. All right. How, how are they going to do it? They have to steal the ball, or they're going to have to? What do they have to do? Steal the ball. Fight for the ball more. Huh? All right. The hey. defense is good, isn't it? Good defense, huh? You have a great day, all right? We'll, be ta we'll take it easy, okay? Okay. <laughs> Second half of play here at Stanley Park Recreational Center. I'm George Marble along with Mike Benson. Good game so far. Looking forward to bringing the rest of it to you. The Hornets will be moving to our right in the second half, and the Top Gun Club will be moving to our left offensively here. And this beautiful complex for the youth organizations to play. There's a good five fields or so at Stanley Park Rec Center, and here's one of the fields, this being the first game of this Saturday, December 8th, 1990. And so all the families and friends getting ready for Christmas, and I'm sure they're going to send some of these tapes over to their relatives who are not able to make it for their celebration, and a chance for them to look at some of their people. And we got now a chance to look at number two there. We have Ari Ampudia, the wing, and he'll throw it into play, and uh, should be an interesting second half, and I hope we'll get some goals in there. But even so, it's been such a good defensive game. Uh, maybe that's all this game will end up being. We'll see. That's all right. Hey, it's, it's been great so far. And like you said, if the second half is anything like the first, yes, George, it will be interesting to see which team will be the first to get on the scoreboard. But uh, aside from all that, it's been a lot of action in this game so far. I've enjoyed it, and I know you have. No question about it. I mean, soccer has really grown. Uh, for the youth in this uh, Southern California area, as well as interest amongst the people. Now, the main question we have, and we've talked about this on several videos, is the fact that 
the, the general public hasn't quite warmed up to soccer in this country. We're looking for the State Cup in 94, but uh, we wonder, will that really mushroom into something that will be commercialized the way the other sports are? That's a good point. I was just going to mention, George, that when I was younger, when I, uh, I was in about the 6th and 7th grade, my dad was in the Air Force and we were stationed over in Turkey. And they actually had a great little soccer program for the kids because we used to play against them. They used to call the sport football, which was actually their term for soccer back then. But it was a lot of fun. And I came to the United States and it wasn't as big when I came over. But now it is growing and it's good to see because it's a great sport. Well, let's hope it'll, it'll work out to something good and it'll help some players to look up to. Obviously, the earnings aren't quite as high, but these kids here are just playing and learning the fundamentals of being an athlete, I think, a lot of them. Not all of them are going to stay in soccer. Some of them are going over to football or to, to basketball. They'll get more into that, and who knows? But it's a good fundamental way to understand the... Uh, the j basics of being an athlete and competing. It really is, George. And the main thing at thi this level is that the kids are gaining a high self-esteem for themselves. They're learning socialization amongst kids in their age group. It's a great confidence builder, and it's just great for the, the kids in general, the coaches, the parents. It's fun, and uh, hey, soccer is here in America to stay, I think. Let's hope so, and uh, for a lot of fun watching these boys develop. You see them sometimes playing a good 10 years. Uh, uh, starting at the age of five, a lot of them. Shot on goal there. That goes wide to the net to the right side. And out of bounds as the uh, Top Gun makes the first move here in the first half, trying to break the scoreless tie. And they put it back into play. Inside now is Jared Seed, but knocked out by the fullbacks again. And, Mike, let's go over the fullback line once more for the Hornets. The fullback line? Yeah, they've really had a big part in this game today. We want to give credit to them when we can, since their backs are turned the wrong way for us to identify them all the time. Okay, well, doing the majority of the strong kicking for them at the fullback position has been Chris Helmer. Also, uh, John Houston has been in there begin getting the majority of the kicks, and Daniel Nuss. So they've had a great game. They've done a lot of damage against the offensive weapons for the Hopgun team, as they've had a, about one shot on goal so far here early on in this second half. That one shot on goal, George, was Ramon Robles. He's the offensive weapon so far for the, for the Top Gun team. He's only nine years old, out of Jefferson Elementary School. He's a fourth grader, likes Nintendo and baseball, so he's an all-around little athlete. He likes to do it all. He competes on the video games as well. Gets into that, and that's one way to compete, trying to win every time and keep on playing. And uh, we're going to have a corner kick here as Ramon will give way to his teammate, and he'll get into position to try to receive the pass. Inside now, but not far enough as the defense holding off the attack as the Hornets do their job once more. And throwing it in will be number 22. Actually, he'll give away. That was uh, Michael Collier, dark-haired youngster for Top Gun. It's, there's so much action, and, and because of the sun's view, sometimes it's difficult, George, to see the numbers as well as we'd like to be able to name the players. in the game and you see him there again and a nice header up in the air for the Top Gun team and now the Hornets moving it in their new goalie in the second half here is going to be Justin Tanuto so Justin will ha handle the nets for the Hornets Hornets based in Rancho Bonanno attacking now the Top Gun team with Brian Makins in the center forward. Inside now over to Robles, a shot on goal, and as I say, by the keeper of the Hornets as he does his job, the first real threat for him here in this second half. And again, George showing that great coordination, dribbling down the field, switching from his right leg to his left, and boom, kicking it, a nice, strong kick with his left foot. So great try there by Robles. Hornets keeping it in their offensive territory and are able to move the ball around. A shot, and that was not quite pulled off by Ari as he was defended tightly by Eric Fontanella. Eric has had a good game today for the Hornets. And now over there, number three, Gabriel Bolden. And Dang. out of bounds. That was a good hustle on his part, trying to get down there real quick uh, to defend on that play. Number five now for RB. That's Tim Luttrell, the center halfback. And now over to the keeper for Top Gun. And it looks like Brian's still in the game there. So I guess Brian Spears is still in the playing goalie for Top Gun as he kicks that ball out of danger. 
Hornets under 500, but they're playing a good game uh, today. There are two wins and six losses and four ties, so they have been in the games. They've, I'm sure, had a lot of tight games this whole year as that one dribbles off to the side and out of bounds. I tell you, that was like a, a great, strong kick by the goalie. All of a sudden, the, the ball came flying back towards him because of the, the strong kick by the full back of the Hornets on that play. Now we're going to have some changes, I believe. We're going to have some substitutions coming in there. Number 11, uh, Ricardo Almeida, the wing. And going out is number 22, Michael Collier. Well, I was told now the coaches uh, and the players for the Hopkins pretty close. A shot now. Oh, and a nice save. Uh, actually, right to the keeper. A shot on goal by Tom Gunn. Uh, I was mentioning they're going to have a... Uh, a coach's appreciation uh, event at the end of this game. The boys are going to be uh, throwing pies in the coach's faces uh. to kind of vent their frustrations out on them, I guess, if they during the season. Sort of a way to uh, entertain them and the coaches as well at the end of the game here. That should be a lot of fun, George. Looking forward to see it, and all that action will be coming up right after the game, so stay tuned for that one. And tossed in now for Top Gun, Jeremiah Price, the fullback, and over there is... Harry and lobbed out over to Jared C., the middle halfback. So he's trying to make a move towards the net, but not to be as over there, number two, uh, Daniel Nuss, the fullback. Hey, he's, not a, he's not that big. That was uh, Ari Ampudio hustling over there. Not a big, big guy. He's uh, nine years old, third grade. Got some interesting little hobbies here. He's into rock collecting, cars, and also George Ninja Turtles. He must like the cartoon as well. I take it he does. That's a big popular, uh, that's a popular one going on these days. He's a little speedster out there. He's fun to watch play. Shot on goal. A nice shot there by Ricardo Almeida, the wing. He hit it hard, but goalie was right there again. He didn't hit it too far away from him. That was the second gift, George, that the goalie's got. The ball going right into his hands both times. Back we go towards the net again. The defense trying to tighten up, but only one guy there. Now the net unoccupied for a second and kicked back away again. Now the Top Gun team showing some domination of the offense the last five minutes or so of play here as they've been moving it up and down past center circle into their offensive area consistently. And back once again is over there number 12, Mitchell Phillips, passing it over now to Brian. Trailing the players with Carter, looking for another chance. He passes it towards the center, but not able to get it. The defense once again for Rancho Bernardo clogging the lanes up nicely when they have to. Hey, they did a nice job there, George. The Hornets on defense because, as you mentioned, just to reiterate what you said, the Top Gun team was in offensive position for the majority of that possession of, uh, of time, and they really did a nice job offensively. But again, a credit to the Hornets defensively. Scoreless game, nothing, nothing. Second half, boys under day, double A competitive soccer here at Stanley Park Recreational Center in University City. I'm George Marble, along with Mike Benson. Don't touch that button, please stay with us. We want to have you watch the rest of this one, and uh, oh, I hope we'll be watching reruns of this, permanent reruns, because it's something that's always fun to remember year after year that you see it. And here we're going to have a free kick for Top Gun coming up and I think they're making a change I think that might have been the goalie earlier I think Gabriel's now going to be playing in the position being a position player no oh. nice oh over the net and, and out no that is Gabriel Bolden I was thinking for a second it was Brian he looked a little like him but no he's staying in the game <laughs> that was a good strong kick though wasn't it Jordan just a great header there on the defense of the Hornets so good play on both sides and now over the net once again so the Hornets Backtracking on defense, but hanging on, still scoreless, and I'm sure they're happy about that. For those of you that are in suspense as I am, it's going to be interesting to see which team gets on the board first, and if it continues the way it is, there may not be a score. Plenty of action, but no score. Shot now, that one deflected away as they couldn't get it through as the defense was there again. Run down now by number eight. That's John Houston, the left halfback. Stolen by Ari there. Ampudia. Nice defensive play. Back on the move, Top Gun. And now kicked aside. Hornets trying to keep it in. They don't want to use up time on the clock by keeping that ball out of bounds as Top Gun throws it in with Phillips, putting the ball back into play. And over there is Ricardo. Ricardo had a 
a shot or two on goal in the second half, trying to score one, unable to do so as the goal kick for the Hornets. Gabriel Bolden, as a coach stressing passing, very important that the players are just moving it around, but not quite finding the open person. Ari there running it down over there as well. The defenders, Daniel Nuss and also Eric Fontanella trying to keep that ball in, in bounds. I was just going to say, Eric Fontanella having his work cut out for him today defensively because the ball in the second half has been in the top gun territory. So a credit to the fullbacks of the Hornets keeping that ball out of the goal. Centering pass now, no one there to quite nail it towards the net as the goalie jumping up in the air and getting it. Fortunately for him, his the teammates were there to help him out because if he had some def off uh, offensive players next to him, he may have been lost that ball. Good strong kick there by the goalie. Come on, right away, right away, come on. So still no score here early in the second half of play. So it's nothing, nothing. And let's see if we can get something going here. It's been really exciting inside the net, but not able to have any offense generated so far by either squad to the point where you can put one in. The defense just have, have held them out really tightly near the 10-yard line if you want to go by yardage here. It's been like that on either side, but more so now in the second half, the Top Gun team has really dominated offensively as the goalie is not able to pass it and get it in. Now that one going wide to the left-hand side and out of bounds, and the goalie... Trying to pass that ball out, Mike, but he's unable to do it and get it out. You're right, and Ramon Robles on that shot-on-goal attempt. Again, he's been the player that's been responsible for most of the shot-on-goals. Just hasn't had one fall for him yet today. Another shot-on-goal and a nice header that goes wide to the left again, and the goalie just running after it. Out of bounds, and top gun again. Just unable to get it in. And you look at some of the players on the front line there with Ramon, Ricardo, and the middle halfback Mitchell Phillips in your screen. As the goalie now will take the goal kick. Actually give way to his teammate there, that being Albert Liu, the sweeper. But again, as you see, not able to get it out to his teammate. And that was intercepted by Ramon Robles. Hornets need to get some passing going them themselves to keep themselves competitive to where they can maybe get some shots on goal here in the second half. They have not gotten any shots on goal thus far in the second half. They've had about five or six during the first half, but have not had any here in, during this period. Both teams continuing strong, fundamental play here. Handling the ball well with both feet and head. Two important facets of the game, as we all well know that in this game of soccer here, new in America, you cannot use your hands, George, in this game. No, no, it's a no-no. And most of the calls for these boys at this age and youth players is usually handball and an offside. That's about it, usually. And handball very common because of the fact that they, a lot of them will be bunched up. Now, on this level, they really are playing very well as far as their positioning, and they don't have that, have that happen too often, but it's still a common occurrence. That is true, and the reason why, if the ball is kicked towards you, a lot of times the natural instinct for an American-born player is to get his hands up and protect him from out the ball, uh, hitting him as hard as it might, and that uh, results, of course, in a, a hands penalty. And there, a goal, but no, that's going to be an offsides call. A shot in the net that will be negated by Michael Yeager as the referees you see making the signal for the offsides call. So it's still nothing, nothing. Hornets were hoping and wishing and wanting in that play, but not quite. And speaking of the goals, George, those are the gentlemen that can use their hands, the goalies, in this game of soccer, as we're all aware. Here we go. Nice feed by Top Gun as they're able to get it out to their front line inside oh off to the left hand side for Ricardo as he had a good position there for a second to get a shot on goal but he didn't take it quick enough and now over is Phillips and that one goes wide to the right so Top Gun just going all all different angles towards the net but not able to get one in you're right George they did have a few opportunities and you were right Ricardo Almeida was almost in position for goal in that earlier play but just couldn't hustle down there quick enough to kick the ball in running it down now number 20 Kevin Makinson the fullback Dishing it out to his front line over there. Number nine, Ramon. Good passing, good movement. Top Gun moving it in. Going towards the center. The fullback making the clearing lob away from midfield and doing it. And finding his man number four, that being Michael Yeager, the right forward. Michael 
Not able to get anything going. Nice play, number six, a great kick away. Jared C., the middle halfback, doing a good job and able to get rid of it. And that is a key play there, baby. I'll tell you, Mike, Michael Yeager, George, uh, showing uh, reminiscence of Ramon Robles, really handling that ball real, real well for the Hornets. And on that last play down the field for Top Gun, they showed great ball control and great teamwork to try to get a goal themselves. Throwing it in, Brian Young. And now over he finds his man, Chris Helmner, as the Hornets will make a bid now. As they had their first shot on goal here in the second half. But now it goes back over to Top Gun territory and will go over the, the line and out of bounds. That is an interesting statistic there, George, is that that was only the first or second shot on goal for the Hornets this whole second half. So that shows you right there that Top Gun, although they haven't got on the board yet, ha have dominated this second half as far as having the ball on their side of the field. Absolutely, but it doesn't always mean that you can win the game. A lot of times you will have that chance where you may have 15 shots on goal versus two or three on the other side, but you may lose the game one nothing. You're scoreless here in the second half at Stanley Park Recreational Center. We're midway through this portion of the game. And we're looking to see if someone can get one in. It's been just amazing how many shots on goal that Top Gun has had, but unable to produce. They've had a good five or six in the second half as well, so you're talking a good 12 to 13 in the game. And a shot on one of the players. I believe that was number 22, the player. Michael Collier. will be a part of the, uh, the pie throwing at the end of the game, as well as the introductions at the beginning. So a chance for you to see him in all facets of, of the game today. And now... The ball going out of bounds, and we're going to have a uh, throw in from that side. A lot of action here, George. The big kick coming up. And kicked out of there by uh, Kevin Chen, the sweeper. Kevin dishing it out, finding his man in front again, and that's been the key, I think, so far in this second half. At least I've seen the players are able to find the man in the open from when on the free kicks, and they're able to distribute more, more so than the Hornets. Well, the more practice time that these kids can get in during the week, the more effective they're going to be in the games. Because when they're dribbling down the field, sure, they have to keep their eye on the ball, but have to know where their teammates are as well. So moving it back in, as Michael Yeager had it for a moment, Brian Young will, will take control and then back over to Yeager once more, and he will not be able to keep it in bounds. And I think we're going to have a – we'll see if we'll have a corner kick on that, that play. As a Jaeger, one of the offensive spark plugs for this Hornet team, has been shut down so far today. He's had a good two or three shots on goal, but not able to convert. And he will give over to Brian Young, the right halfback. So Brian, take a shot now and take a look at the defense being built up for this one. Good strong kick there, George. Right over there, looking for Tim Luttrell, not able to get a shot on goal, and it went by him. And the defense holding on for Tom Cunn. I'd say 33% of the time, I was told, and I've read this and i heard this from other people, 33% of the time when you get a corner kick from the sideline like that, they, it will result in a score. Huh. So I was not even aware of that statistic. Quite often it'll happen, and it's not un uncommon. Now, in youth sports, don't know if that would be a lower amount, but I know in professional it's that up that high. Youth sports, it, the percentage would obviously go down because of the fact that it's, it's very difficult for these kids to get that strong kick out there towards the goal area and allow the their teammate to head the ball in or kick the ball in it's going to take usually a couple players to get the ball in from there it will do that but you know it, it, maybe it can make the kids aware of how the potential that they can produce if they work on a play like that because of the fact that it they have the control of the ball they've got the kick and they've got a chance to make the right maneuvering of where the, the players are going to be and where the ball is going to be placed to where they can time it. It's almost like a timing pattern in football, as an example. Oh, that's true. And, and the corner kick is practiced uh, in soccer just as often as special teams would be practiced on a football team as far as kickoff and kickoff returns. So they know full well, these players, these coaches, that these corner kick is a vital, vital part of this game. And you take a look at the offensive weapon, one of the ones for Top Gun there is Ramon Robles as well with Brian Makinson as the uh, goal kick for RB. Knocked out by, by number 11, Brian Young, and turned around, Top Gun, able to turn that ball into their direction as they have been doing that the second half of play most of the time. They've only been one or two runs, really, for Rancho Bernardo in the second half, so really, Top Gun has held them off very nicely, but they've got to produce something for all of that. They want to get something out of it, and we'll have a toss-in for Kevin Makinson, the fullback, and 
see if he can get something started for them. At this point in the game, George, if anybody were to look at these statistics and just look at the time of possession on the offensive part of the field and the shots on goal, most people would probably think that Top Gun would be winning by a score of five, six to nothing at this point in the game, but that's not the case. Soccer is a funny game. Sometimes you, you get breaks that go with you, go against you, the ball will hit the side of the post, uh, top of the crossbar, and uh, sometimes they say an unlucky shot or, you know, and that'll happen. And even though the other team has only had a few shots on goal and they, and they were able to get one in, the other team having all those unlucky breaks, the score is the score, and it doesn't matter who had more possession. And that's what happens in this kind of game. But as far as these kids are concerned, they're just learning out there, getting the experience, uh, just making some friends, having some fun, and, and learning how to compete, because this is the competitive level. And the whistle sound, the game is over. And we do have a scoreless tie after all, and it looks as though that's, that's how it's going to end, actually. And Mike Benson, good game, both it, sides. It really was, and although there were no score, it did not take away from the excitement of the game. There's a lot of uh, kicks on goal, and that always makes uh, for an exciting game and a, and a good defensive battle for both teams. But more importantly, both kids showing a lot of great fundamentals, really enjoyed watching it and bringing all the action to you out there. You know, some of the things the coaches really stress imp importance at this young age, of course, is uh, good sportsmanship. The kids are able to shake hands, and uh, although this was not a loss for either side, uh, even so, just the idea of getting together and saying good game, and even though there are any tempers that flared in any particular situation, with these kids there was no problem, but it's a good thing to have and a good skill that kids need to learn and develop throughout their young age, and they're going to do it right here. So both teams will shake hands and congratulate each other. The Top Gun team outshot Hornets margin of around 6-2 to two in the second half, and they were relatively even at 6-6 six and six in the first half, so we'll give an estimated total of 12 shots on goal for the Top Gun team versus around 8 for the Hornets. As we are a scoreless tie, we're going to have some fun and festivities after this game. We're going to have some pie throwing for the coaches to the coaches. If any of the kids are frustrated about anything, I guess they're going to express it uh, during the post-game show. We're also going to have interviews, so stay tuned for that. I'm George Marble. Thanks to Mike Benson for his help in cold commentary today. Again, the final score. The Hornets, nothing. Top Gun, nothing. We're back with the interviews and fun in just a moment. It takes a lot of time and effort from a lot of people to help the kids play. But re what really helps is the, uh, some of the financial support we get from different individuals. They help us buy uniforms and uh, sweats for the guys and go to a couple tournaments at the end of the season. And uh, we've got four gentlemen here today that have sponsored our, uh, our Top Gun Soccer 1990. Brian, you want to come up here? Kevin? Adi? Bruiser. I'd like to thank, uh, turn around so that I can take a picture. I'd like to thank these, these gentlemen and their businesses for helping us uh, with our team for this year for Top Gun 1990. We've got uh, Mr. Case from Modular Stone Products. <laughs> Doug Makinson from Call Doug Electric. Tech Properties. And Mr. Ampudia from Papas and Beer, Cantina and Restaurant. I want to thank you guys again for uh, helping with Top Gun. What do you say, guys, from Top Gun? Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. My assistant coaches for helping me out throughout the whole year. I think uh, they did a hell of a job and uh, they put a, uh, a lot of effort into this team and I really thank these guys.
Uh, Al Makinson. Thank you. Rick Phillip. They've done a wonderful job with this team and helping me out. I also want to thank uh, somebody who was not here and has helped us throughout the year, and that's Henry Sosa and his co uh, coaching staff uh, from the San Diego Soccers. And I uh, appreciate their help in, in uh, training the kids also. I also want to thank the parents for, uh, it's been our first year in AA. This is the first time we ever traveled and uh, it, it takes a lot, you know, to get the kids and uh, get going to La Costa, Lemon Grove, uh, out to Scripps, everywhere. So I, I thank the parents for getting their players and having a commitment to the team, which uh, that's the only way it works, is uh, you make a commitment and you keep it, and these parents have, have done that all year long. And uh, I really thank them a lot. All right. <coughs> So, George Landron back with some interviews here with the uh, a tie, zero zero tie, Top Gun, playing the Hornets and your name. Hi. Hi, Ari. How you doing? Good. You guys had a lot of shots on goal today, didn't you? Yeah. Couldn't quite get them in though, but hey, you had a good game anyway. Uh, you been having a good season? Yeah. And uh, what school do you go to this year? I'm down my pines. And what grade are you in? Third grade, and uh, do you have a chance to see anybody in the school on Monday and tell them about the games on Saturday, or anything? Yeah. A lot of a lot of talk about the wins that you guys have been having this year, right? Yeah. Good deal. And do you have any things at home you like to do besides uh, play soccer? No. Not really, huh? No. You just like to go out and have fun and kick the ball around and learn to play a little more, huh? Yeah. Good deal. Okay. Well, thanks for coming over. Okay. You have a good one. And your name? Hi, Gabriel. How are you doing? Good. And you've been playing soccer for a while now, haven't you? Mm -hmm. You've kind of grown up with the sport. Uh, what grade school are you in? Four. And how many years have you been playing soccer now? Four or five. Four or five years. So are you going to continue on and maybe end up playing in high school sometime? Probably. Good deal. And that's the way to do it. Uh, now, were you a goalie today? No. No, you weren't. You were one of the... Uh, what, what position were you at? Middle. Sweeper. Middle sweeper, so that's a good, that's an important position. You've got to have a good uh, leg on that, don't you? Mm -hmm. and you? And you showed it a lot today. You had a good game. Uh, this team was a little bit tougher than what you thought, wasn't it? Well, you had a lot of shots on goal. You, you almost pulled it off. Um, do you have any things at home you like to do besides uh, play soccer at all? Play baseball. And what position do you like to play there? Uh, shortstop. Oh, shortstop. That's a good position. The Padres just got a new shortstop, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyway, uh, you have a good day, all right? And I hope we'll be seeing you again next year. Okay. Bye-bye. What -bye. are you doing? What's your name? Bruce. Bruce what? Bruce, uh, you've been playing soccer for a while, too? Yeah. How many years have you been playing? No, I was all the way. Four or five. All right. You getting ready for the holidays? All psyched up for Christmas? All right. Good deal. It's, it's getting to that time. And uh, are you going to be playing any uh, indoor soccer at all or just outdoor? Have you ever tried playing indoor before? Or, uh, you like outdoor better? Yeah, it's a different kind of style. It's more like, more, more th of a thinking game, I think, with outdoor, you know? You just have to position yourself in the right spot and everything and know where to go. And uh, you guys have had a good year, haven't you? You've been doing really well? You had a tough, tough team today, or what? Not really. You just, just couldn't get the ball in the net, huh? Uh, what's, what, uh, what school do you go to, anyway? Uh huh. And what grade are you in? Great. So, uh, do you play any, anything else besides soccer at all? Or? Oh, really? Uh, you play for the San Diego team here for hockey? Yeah. And what position do you play? Uh, Defense? or? Oh, well, that's a great thing to get started at an early age hockey, though, to get your skating skills up and to be able to, you know, and eventually, you know, get into it. It's a good sport, and uh, maybe San Diego will get hockey going pretty good. Anyway, uh, you know, you have a good one, and uh, I hope we'll be seeing you maybe on the ice later on. Okay, thanks a lot now. Hello, what's your name? Yeah. What was it? Jeremy. How you doing? Good. And uh, how long have you been playing the sport of soccer? For a while, huh? Four or five, years. Yeah. Four or five years, huh? And uh, are you going to continue on and continue to play? Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any other sports you like to play at all besides that? Or? Mm, not really. Not really, just the soccer. And uh, mm -hmm. do you have any uh, sh sports shows on TV you like to watch or any games uh, to see? No. no. Just getting in there and playing with the kids and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, what school do you go to? Beth Israel. And what grade do you want? Fourth. And do you have a favorite uh, thing you like to study in school at all or anything? 
Not really, huh? Yeah, I know, I know, I know how that goes too. Anyway, uh, you uh, say hi to your mom and dad at home. Maybe have anything to say to them? Um, I'm mom dad. There you go. Okay, good smile on you. Hey, you have a good day, and we'll, we'll be seeing you hopefully next year playing soccer. Okay. Okay. Bye now. Bye. Good today. Good. Good deal. What's your name? Kevin. Kevin what? Kevin. And Kevin, uh, you've been playing soccer for how long? Um, three years. And what do you think of it? You like having a lot of fun playing? Yeah. A little more intense this year, huh, with a double A. A lot different than, than recreational, isn't it? Mm -hmm. have, you, have you learned a lot this year? Yeah. I bet you have. Uh, what school do you go to, anyway? Delmore Hills. Uh-huh. And what grade are you in? Fourth. Is there anybody on the team that goes to the same school as you? No, so you don't have a chance to talk to them on Monday about what you did on Saturday, huh? Mm -hmm. Not really, huh? Um, what other hobbies do you have besides, like, sports? Um, I, I paint. Oh. You paint. What kind of things do you like to paint? Um, just, I like to draw cards and pictures. Great. Well, maybe someday we'll see you in the art galleries or something or <coughs> selling some of your works. Uh, my brother does the same thing. A lot of fun and very interesting. And you have a good day and uh, you have a good holiday too, okay? Okay. We'll see ya. Hi, what's your name? Ramon. Ramon? How are you doing today? Fine. Okay. And uh, where were you out there on the field? What position were you playing today? Middle forward. That's a very responsible position, isn't it? You only went. You have a, did you get a lot of shots on goal today? Yeah. It was tough, wasn't it? Though you thought that there were so many close shots that were going to the left of the net, weren't they? Mm -hmm. I, I noticed that right away. And uh, you had the, you guys had the ball on the offensive side a lot, you know, and you just couldn't get it in. Uh, this was one of those days, wasn't it? Like, uh, have you had a, a good year as far as have you won a lot of games with a lot of goals and stuff this yeah. year? A little harder than last year, though. With double A, it's a little bit harder, isn't it? Yeah. And how long have you been playing soccer? Four or five years. Oh, so y you know all about that, don't you? Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have any other sports you like to play? Baseball. Baseball. In what position? Shortstop. Shortstop, too. We've got two shortstops on this team. Oh, maybe you'll be competing for the same position sometime. <laughs> anyway, uh, you have a good one, and uh, I hope we'll be seeing you out there next year. Okay. Okay? Take care now. Hi, what's your name? Jamar Class. How you doing? Fine. All right. And, uh, You've been playing for a few years yourself, soccer, aren't, haven't you? How many years have you been playing? Five. Five four. years. So a lot of these players playing four to five years. And uh, what grade in school are you in? Fourth. And what school are you going to this year? Miller. Uh huh. Is that located here? In uh, where is it located? Tier Santa. Oh, Tier Santa. Oh, I see. A little bit below here. Uh, at, in Murphy Canyon. Oh, okay. In that area. And uh, do you have any other uh, things you like to do besides so playing soccer? Or? Football. Football, what position do you like to play there? Um, don't really know, huh? Do you guard. play guard? Yeah. You play oh that's okay. You play with your friends a lot, don't you? And play that's what I used to do too when I was younger. You'd have like a lot of games and stuff and we'd we tackle and everything. That's a lot of fun too. Well, you uh, have a good holiday and uh, we'll, we'll be seeing you I hope next year, right? All right, okay. We'll see ya. How you doing? Fine. You look like one of the biggest guys on this team. You look like you're built for some football. Do you play any football besides soccer? No. no not really, huh? No. What grade in school are you in? Fourth. Fourth grade. Big, big guy for fourth grader, yeah. And uh, do, you, uh, do you have any players in this team that go to the same school where you can yeah. talk about the game on Monday or Tuesday yeah. or something? A lot of fun to do that, especially when you win a game. Today's game was kind of different, wasn't it, though? Yeah. You guys had so many. You outshot them by, I don't know, how many goal, uh, shots on goal, and you just couldn't quite get it in. But uh, you still tied, you know, and that, that, that's good. And um, I'm sure you'll be even doing better uh, next week. You got one more game, right? Yeah. During the regular season. Uh, what other hobbies do you have besides soccer? Um, no. Don't, not really. This is something you're just totally into, right? Yeah. Do you watch any games on TV or anything? Like, no. Not really, huh? Well, uh, uh, do you have any, what do you want to be when you grow up? Do you have any idea? No. Not really. Huh? You're kind of, you got a ways to go anyway. Um, well. Uh, well, you have a good day, and uh, I hope we'll be seeing you again. Okay. Thanks a lot. Come on. Bye. Good. Good smile on you. All right, there you go. All right. You're looking forward to the holidays. Looking forward to Christmas. Yeah. All right. Uh, do any do any uh, shopping with your brother or sister or anything like that? Uh, no. no, not yet, huh? Anyway, uh, what uh, school are you going to this year? Lafayette. And what grade are you in? Third. Third grade. And uh, is soccer something you're going to stick with for a while? You think? Maybe. I'm not sure. Uh huh. Well, just stick it out. You never know what might happen. Uh, do you have any other activities that you do besides this? Baseball. Baseball. What position? Pitcher and shortstop. Uh-huh. Pitching is a good uh, position. You can do a lot with that. Do you have a good throwing arm? Mm-hmm. Do you, do you like to twist the ball around a little bit, try to do that? That kind of makes it interesting, too.
Uh, are you going to be playing in the springtime? Um, yeah. So maybe we'll be seeing you out there next next year, you know, playing baseball. Um, do you have any other hobbies at all besides uh, sports? Um, hockey. Hockey. Do you play that for fun, or do you play I on play a team? Street hockey. Oh, street hockey is a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, I've done that before, too. Um, well, you take care, and uh, uh, you have a great holiday, okay? Fine. Good. You have a nice smile and a nice grin on your face. You had a lot of fun today playing, didn't you? Yeah. And uh, what, uh, what, what, what do you think of this team anyway this year? It's good. They've had a good year, haven't they? Mm -hmm. And uh, today it was funny. They just couldn't quite get a goal in. Wasn't it weird how they kept shooting and shooting and they just couldn't quit put one in? Yeah. They were like on the offensive side, like three quarters of the game, you know? Mm -hmm. And they just couldn't quite get it in. But uh, what position were you out there playing I today? I played center forward. So, oh, you were? So you were taking a lot of shots too, weren't you? Mm -hmm. And uh, did you have a lot of close ones today where you felt, oh, I should have had it in? Yeah. Yeah, it was that kind of day, but you still tied them, so it was, it was a good game anyway for both sides, and they, they got you when they had to. And uh, what school do you go to this year? Lafayette. Uh-huh, and what grade are you in? Fourth. Fourth grade. And uh, do you have any other things you'd like to do? Uh, baseball. Do baseball. Do you have a favorite baseball player? Um, uh, so. Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson. Oh, yeah, he's, he's great. He's, he can do football, too. I mean, he's somebody to be admired to play two sports like that. Uh, do you have any other things you'd like to do? No. Not really, huh? Well, uh, you also... Have a nice holiday, okay? And Merry Christmas to you. Hi, what's your name? Kevin. <coughs> Kevin what? Makinson. Hi, Kevin. How are you doing today? Fine. Good deal. And uh, how many years have you been playing the sport of soccer? Four. Four years. Okay. So you've grown up with a lot of these players playing together. You guys know each other real well? That's good, though, because then you know who to pass to or who to feed it to and how to play with each other. It's so important, you know, when you can do that. It's like basketball team the same way. They need to know each other. And are uh, you playing any other sports now? Baseball. And where do you play there? Third base. Third base. Do any of these guys play with you on, on a team? Yeah. They do. Which ones? AJ. Uh huh. Mitchell. Uh huh. And Brian sometimes. Oh, that's great. So you guys really have a, know everything about each other about playing sports. What grade school are you in? Lafayette. And what what grade are you in? Third. Third grade. So uh, I take it you're going to be playing soccer for quite some time, maybe. Do you have any favorite sports heroes on TV you like to watch and admire? Not really. No. Well, I'm sure you have a lot of fun out there today playing, and, and it was a good time for all. You have a good one now. We'll see you. Bye-bye. That with a great smile. Andrew. Andrew what? Andrew McKenna. And Andrew, what do you think of your dad? He's a good coach, isn't he? Yeah. He knows how to coach real well. And you're one of the baseball players too, aren't you? Yeah. And did you play shortstop when I did you a, a couple years ago? I think you were playing uh, infield, weren't you? And where are you playing now? You still playing baseball? Yeah. Where, where do you play? Pitcher and catcher. Pitcher, oh, what, really? Pitcher and catcher, that's interesting because then you can understand both sides of it. Wow. You throw the ball and then you can come around and then play catcher, that's interesting. Do you have a good throwing arm you like to throw? That's important too. Uh, which sport do you like better, baseball or soccer? Karate. Karate, you take karate? Blue and belt. where are you right now? Blue belt. Blue belt, so that, how many more belts do you have to get the... the, um, Three. the Great. Oh, wow. That, that, that comes in a lot of handy, doesn't it? It will come in handy for you if any have any trouble or anything. Great. Well, uh, you uh, also uh, have any other things you like to do, like on TV, any shows you like to watch or anything? Or? Fresh Prince. Fresh Prince. <laughs> All right. Do you have any, like, cartoons you like to watch? Flintstones. Flintstones. Oh, yeah. Fred and Barney and Wilma and, and uh, Betty. No doubt. Okay. Well, you, you have a good day, okay? And uh, have a great holiday, okay? okay? See ya. We have the goalie, and what's your name? Brad Spears. How you doing? Good. Good. And uh, you like playing out back there? Yeah. Did you feel bored today a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> but you have to catch your attention in the game. You never know. That breakaway may happen any second, right? You never know. But uh, it, it was tough, though, just standing there watching. You know, you probably wish you could have kicked a few of them out more often. But your offense was playing so well, they just dominated the game. You know, they just couldn't quite get any goals <laughs> today. But um, I'm sure they've been tougher games for you. Uh, what do you think of this team this year? Are you having a lot of fun playing? Yeah. And uh, you're going to be playing next year, I take it, right? Mm, I don't think so. No? Not really, huh? You get, what else do you like to do besides soccer? Uh, baseball. Baseball? And what do you play there? Uh, well, I don't play baseball. I just like Do it for fun? Or, yeah. You, know, you, could, you could hit a home run over the fence easily. You're a big, big, solid guy, you know, or you can play some football. Do you ever do that, play football? Yeah. But I don't play like on a team. I just play. Play for fun. You should, yeah. Maybe you should go out. you got to get some heavy blocking, you know, and get those holes for the running backs or something. You're a big guy. Uh, what school do you go to? Doyle. And what grade are you in? 
course. Fourth grade, okay. Well, uh, hey, go out there. Maybe, maybe you'll run into some of those sports later on or something, you know? And uh, maybe we'll see you again next year. You have a good one. We'll see you now. Bye. Last but not least, for the players, your name? Michael. What is it? Michael. Michael what? Carter. How's it going today, Michael? Fine. Good. And where were you at today on the field? In the wing. The wing position. So you were another one who was getting some shots on goal. Did you, did you get a few of them? Yeah. There, you, get, you get any close calls? Yeah. Uh, it was kind of frustrating for a second, wasn't it? Thinking, oh, they just couldn't quite go in. But it was the other team played defense when they had to, too. You know, they, they were able to you know, stop you, too. So they did a good job. And uh, what, what school do you go to? Green. And what grade? Third. Third grade. So you got a long ways to go to where maybe you'll play playing soccer for a while. You going to be playing next year, you think? Yes. And uh, wh where do you uh, like to do besides uh, play soccer? Do you have any cartoons you like to watch on TV that are fun? Yeah, I watch Simpsons. The Simpsons? Oh, yeah, they're great. I watched them the other night. They're hilarious. And uh, do you have any other uh, hobbies at home at all? No, I used to, I used to play football, but I don't know. I play, um, I play baseball for Fernando's team, whatever they play. And what position would you want to play? First base. First base. So you get, you, oh, you'd be great for first base. You got the long legs. You can stretch and catch those throws in the dirt. And that's what, the, that's what it's all about. I think you'd work out great as a first baseman. And uh, maybe we'll see you out there in the spring. I hope you will. You know, a lot of these same guys I hear are on the same team, right? So you get, you get to play with them and, you, and you, you know what they're like and everything. And it's great. Well, you have a great holiday as well, okay? And uh, say hi to mom and dad at home, okay? to get even with the coaches yeah. for yelling yeah. at you guys, right? Yeah. yeah! But we never did that, right? Yeah! We yeah. yeah. never yelled at you? Yeah, 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 yeah. No! Yeah. Okay, get in line, guys. Get in line. Get in line. Get in line. Yeah. Well, that's a tradition in Top Gun. Yeah. Yeah. You guys get to throw a pie in the face. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. It'll be one at a time. Me first! No, no. no. One at a time. Remember who yelled the loudest? Right. Remember who yelled at you the most? Oh Remember who the good guy? Yeah. Remember the good guy. Okay. Okay, guys, get in line. Get in shoulder to shoulder. Shoulder to shoulder. No, no. Shoulder to shoulder. Shoulder to shoulder. Shoulder to shoulder. Watch out. Shoulder to shoulder. Shoulder to shoulder. Listen up. Listen up, guys. Listen up. Listen up, guys. Starting from here. Here, here, right? Yeah. Hold up, we'll tell you when. <laughs> Just get on the ground. Oh, yeah! Yeah! yeah. 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 Is, is this okay? Rick, you're mine! Okay, can you get Perfect! It? Okay, one at a time. This is, this is to get even with the coaches, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. One at a time. Don't hit your hand in my face. Okay, starting with Adi. Go, Adi. Whoever you want. Whoever you want. Whoever you want. Okay, JP, whoever you want. Whoever you want.
got a list now, Ricardo. Well, guys, I love you guys a lot. Guys, good season. One more game left, right? You win one.